names of both bands. What means Bullet La Volta? Bullet La Volta. Uh, we kind of, it's a conglomerate name we stole from different places. Like the Bullet we got from the Bullet Boys, the La we got from Yo La Tango, and Volta we got from a band called Men and Volts. And we just stuck it all together. And we just stuck it all together and decided to call ourselves Bullet La Volta. Everyone knows what an acid head is, or a pothead, but what is a lemon head? It has nothing to do with acid head, that's for sure. A lemon head is a... Lemon head is a candy, actually, it's in America. Candy. And it's, it's really kind of a stupid candy, and maybe it's, it was a reflection on our own self-image. Lemon heads are stupid people. <laughs> it's, this, it's this little candy, sweet on the outside and the inside, it's really, like, sour. It, they all taste differently. You have one, it'll taste really good. Another one, and you'll get nauseous. It's like, they're really, um, they're... So, Clay! Clay Tarver from Bullet La Volta <laughs> is coming hither. How much what did you say an elephant's genitalia weigh again? Very few people know that an elephant's genitalia weigh 90 pounds. <laughs> Wait, you want to come sit down? No and way, nine. Nice. I, don't, I don't know what that is in kilos. It's like 54 kilos? A boat, yeah. Oh. That's pretty much. Yeah, that's pretty much. Clay Tarver? Clay is almost oh, synonymous oh, with uh, elephant weighted penis. He's a big man. I big man in roll. Boston, both in rock and roll and in sexual output. Thank you very much. He's one of my favorite rock idols from a sexual point of view. It's Clay Tarver. So, what are we talking about? We've just been talking about, talk about the names. Right you are from Boston, from the Boston area. How much are you connected with the old Boston hardcore scene? Like, you're yeah, the band from this is Boston, not LA. Can I clarify? Uh, the yeah. connection is that Anderson, Indiana, Scranton, Pennsylvania, Boston, Mass, Cambridge, Mass, San Antonio, Texas. Yeah. Uh, but you all live now in Boston. Yeah. yeah. Or near. And basically, yeah. the hardcore scene. All the old hardcore people in Boston despise the Lemonheads. Really? Yeah. 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 They're, su they're synonymous Just cause, with bullshit. Yeah, the Lemonheads are horrible to all hardcore people because we are kind of, to them, horrible. We don't play this, that kind of stuff. We don't have a message. We do have a massage after every gig, but no message. Maybe homophobia, too, I think. All We're not homophobic, just scared. That's our message. <laughs> Yeah, yes. a lot of people don't seem to realize how, because um, the Boston hardcore seems seem, seems so like tough, that a lot of people don't realize like how it was like really one of the most homosexual of like hardcore scenes all over. There's seriously so many hom like homosexuals in the Boston hardcore scene. Let's change the topic. <laughs> <laughs> Are there? Did you have any yeah, expectations before you came over? <laughs> I mean, you have been living in Italy for about one year, so you knew Europe. I, I quite a bit but uh do you have any expectations or we thought that we'd have a good time and we were having a great time so far my i didn't i had no expectation that the shows would be like so fun so big so definitely such no a good response that there'd be like 500 people at a show that we definitely didn't expect that at all can i go on the record to say i have no expectations <laughs> of tonight in hamburg at De rota fabric <laughs> <laughs> i second that lack of expectation why well, there's some people out there not too bad. There's a really lot of more people at club tonight. But uh, yeah, we're. It's definitely been a total excitement for us because I mean we haven't, we haven't, we're incredibly spoiled after about almost two weeks in Europe. But uh, we've had a really good time with all the amount of people that we've played in we front of. Use a shower now, though. <laughs> <laughs> This is our sixth day and six shows in a row. So this we're is easier than touring the United States. Yeah. See, I've yeah. toured the United States many a time with many different bands, and I know so well, actually. But the first Metallica tour you were on, Corey, that was, that was a rough tour. Actually, was... I think I only played outside of Boston a total of four days in my life, so I shouldn't be talking about touring. <laughs> that was, yeah, he is correct that it is much... Yes. It is really nice to tour in Europe. I mean, that's a sincere comment. The gay thing about the hardcore, that was a joke. But <laughs> no, that's, we're just, the, just the trying to work Europe, it. over America. That's that's true. That's definitely true. So, notice any big differences between the toilets? The we like the toilets. The toilets are good here. Your shit gets to sit on a little ledge there, and uh, you get to watch it before you flush it down and pushes it over the cliff. I kind of like that because it doesn't. When the turd hits the water, it doesn't splash water back up on your ass. 
the other differences have just been like the amount of people that are into music that would be willing to come see a band like us and that's been fun but yeah. and the clubs treat you great and you get uh I don't know, you just feel a lot more productive as a band. One bottle of that. Can I tell you my only gripe about the European scene? What? Which is the graffiti left by American and other bands in dressing rooms. So and the, um, Brennan's Rural, Corey Luke Brennan's Rural, the amount of graffiti left by a band is <clears throat> proportionate to how much they suck. <laughs> I agree. Any special band? Uh, shock treatment from Detroit. They're pretty bad. I, their graffiti was particularly bad. Also, lo Love Slug, even though their music's actually good, their amount of graffiti they've left all over the dressing rooms of Europe is disgraceful. Miracle Workers. Stuff is everywhere. I don't know anything about the band, but they've written some really stupid shit on the walls. Their music is good. That's why it surprises me. It's the exception to Brennan's rule, which proves it. <laughs> Two exceptions to prove the one example. <laughs> the only thing, the only thing I appreciate is any RKL graffiti because RKL's graffiti is so tasteful, just like their music. Also, Brennan's rule number three: any beer brewed by monks or priests is the most kick-ass substance you'd ever want to swallow. In fact, in Utrecht, uh, uh, Clay and I were walking down the street in Utrecht, and uh, we saw this uh, monk, like this cutout wooden monk, advertising a beer, and we knew we had to get in there. And we missed the show because of it, but it was well worth it, I thought. So you missed the show? Well, I was present on stage, but I don't remember anything except uh, threatening to uh, jump into the audience to uh, beat someone up because they had thrown a beer on me only after I had just invited them to throw as much beer on me as possible. <laughs>